18. Kevin Durant is sitting down to address the media now as the Nets take the 3-1 lead. Hey, Kevin, just a, you know, historic offensive performance tonight. Just uh, did you guys feel in a rhythm right from the start and, and what made the difference for you guys? Uh, yeah, I think we were locked in on the defensive side of the ball the whole game, which kept us engaged in the offensive end. We didn't force anything. Um, we played within the offense. And, you know, James was incredible at controlling the ball. Calvary scored efficiently. I got some efficient shots. I think down the line, um, you know, we just played a, a nice, efficient game. Michael Grady, Yes Network. Hey, Kev, I mean, it's unfortunate that this season even has to be asked, but um, someone tried to toss a water bottle at, at Kyrie or did toss a water bottle at Kyrie um, as you guys are walking off the floor. Just your your thoughts on just, again, um, uh, an unfortunate act and the fan was arrested, but just what can be done about, you know, again, protecting protecting players in situations like this? I mean, fans got to grow up at some point. I know that being in the house for a year and a half with the pandemic, um, got a lot of people on edge, got a lot of people uh, stressed out. Um, but when you come to these games, you got to realize, man, these, these, these men are human. You know, we're not animals. We're not in a circus. Uh, you coming to the game is not all about you as a fan. So have some respect for the game. Have some respect for these human beings and have some respect for yourself. Your mother wouldn't be uh, proud of you throwing water bottles at, at basketball players or spitting on players or tossing popcorn. So grow the fuck up uh, and, and enjoy the game. You know, it's bigger than, it's bigger than you. Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, Kevin, along those same lines, how do you feel for Kyrie and the kind of performance he had today? And what does it say about his mental toughness, you know, to handle this kind of abuse that he got? I mean, Kyrie has been through some tough times in his life that's off the, bas off the basketball court. So him coming in here, this is sanctuary. No matter what's being said uh, from the stands, he knows that, you know, everybody in between those lines respect him, respect who he is as a person and as a player, and his teammates got his back. So he didn't worry about, you know, handling this crowd. I mean, everybody throws insults at every player in this league. You know what I'm saying? So he, he came out here and, and wanted to just play better than he did last game, and we did as a unit. Wanted to play better than we did last game, and we came out here and executed. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin, just speaking about what, what you guys did last game versus this game, what would you say is the biggest adjustment? Was, was there a mindset adjustment from game three to game four for, the, for this one? Yeah, um, Evan Fournier, five for 15. Uh, Marcus Smart, four for 12, two for nine from the three. Uh, we try to take those guys out. You know, we know once they get it going, their team can can t change and uh, become high power. So, you know, Tatum, he's going to get his looks. He's going to get his touches. But the other guys, I think we did a solid job on Brian Lewis, New York Post. I'm curious, Kevin. I mean, did you have a vantage point? I mean, obviously, we could see some of the guys saw the water bottle after it came in. Tyler obviously saw it. Did you see, I see it? it. And you uh, didn't see it? What was, no, the, what was the message from you guys, I guess, to Kyrie then at that we point? We didn't even talk about it. We know, how, we know how these people here are in Boston, and we know how passionate they are about Kyrie in particular. Um and they still upset at him. And that's no reason for them to act childish, but we don't need to speak on that. We know what it is already coming in here. Glad we got the W. Hopefully we don't got to come back here this year. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Kevin, you guys had that stretch in the second quarter where you made your first seven shots and, and built a lead up. And I think that was with you and Kyrie on the bench. What can you make of the second unit play in the early second quarter and that stretch you guys had there? Well, they did their job. They're supposed to come in and change the tempo if we down or if we tied up, try to push the lead. And guys came in and played extremely well on both ends of the floor. James was the catalyst for getting guys open looks and getting to the rim itself. And, you know, once me and Kyrie came back into the game, we just tried to fit in as much as possible. And, you know, that second unit along with Joe, James, Landry, um, Nick Claxton, BB, they did a great job of just setting the tone uh, for the rest of the game. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Kevin, at the end of the fourth quarter, it looked like you and Kyrie were already sort of pouring over the stat sheet. What was jumping out to you then? What were you looking for? Um, their field goal percentage, um, how many more shots they got up in us, and their offensive rebounds. Uh, I think we pretty much controlled a lot of that. They shot 38 to 36 to 40 percent majority of the game from the field, and they and you know, uh, they only had 12 offensive rebounds. You know, so. Um, 
we look at that stuff, especially playing against this team, and we, we did our job, you know, when it comes to that. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Smitty, for good reason, KD had some pretty strong words for the fan that threw a water bottle at Kyrie. I totally agree, Kristen. I mean, when you, when you look at what's going on right now with a lot of these fans, it's just uncalled for. I mean, not only is childish, but it could be dangerous. You're throwing an object at a human being. I just think of all everybody, you were at your job and somebody could come throw popcorn on you, could come spit on you, or throw a water bottle at you. This is a game. Come enjoy the game. Obviously, root for your team. But there's no place for objects to be thrown at players. And it's just appalled me, whether it's popcorn, uh, a water bottle, Ryan. But it took me over the edge to, for somebody to spit on somebody else. That's the lowest of the lowest. And I, I, that's a disgrace. You know, Smitty, things like this have always happened. But as players, we've always been told to be the bigger man, be the bigger person. Don't react, you know. Um, but I'm glad that with social media, these things are now having attention drawn to them. So at a certain point, enough is enough. And the biggest thing I took from what KD said, we aren't animals at the zoo. We are people, too. So honor each and every man or woman with the same type of respect and dignity that you'd like to act. And there's a mentality that I got from certain places that I played. Some people buy a ticket to the game and they have a mindset like they bought a player. You didn't buy a player, you bought a ticket to watch a basketball game. So whether you like the fan or not, there are levels to the way you cheer and you honor yourself. And as KD said, even more so, you honor yourself and your family. Several instances like these mm -hmm. led the league to releasing a statement uh, just earlier this week enforcing a uh, more strict code of conduct. Yeah. Do you think that there's anything else that the league needs to be doing? or? Any other parameters the league needs to have in place? I think to continue to make examples of these people who, who do so and to let them know, hey, this is how we can give uh, have a lifetime ban. You know, you can't just have your buddy or friend or cousin buy you a ticket. You will not be allowed in a NBA arena. And I thought it was even bigger that the uh, opposing teams where it happened, Philadelphia issued a statement. The New York Knicks issued a statement. So, yes, we want you to cheer for us. You're with us. This is playoff basketball. We're emotion. But, you know, I, I, I think just – you know, letting everybody know that this is not going to be tolerated. Ryan and Kristen, I take even a step further. You're banned from all NBA games in all 30 franchises. Mm. That's where I think we need to go. And, it, and if it continues, now you're banned from NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, MLS, mm. whatever it may be, because then I think that's the reason where these fans will get a chance to, you know, they can hurt as well when you have things like this going on. And, and, and Smitty, you know it. You know we love having the up close interactions with fans. Mm -hmm. Even a little trash talk. You think more famously Spike Lee. You know Clipper Darrell yeah. with the Clippers. Mm -hmm. you, as a player, you enjoy it and you live for it. But when it goes over the line, enough is enough. Without a doubt, and there were legal repercussions as this fan was arrested because this is, as you mentioned, not something you can do at anyone else's job, and that <laughs> is what's happening here. Absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's silly, too. You know, and it's, it, it's very childish. You know, these guys are professional athletes. If you